What's going on everybody? Christian Ballard here with Ballard Sports Media coming at you with another college football preview video for the 2020 season and up today the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Alright, looking at Minnesota, first off, I know what you're thinking. Why Minnesota? You know what? Uh, you haven't done this team or that team yet. Minnesota, that's a pretty specific team. Uh, I, I've actually had a Minnesota planned out for a while as far as um, uh, trying to do a preview video for them. Uh, you know, they're a team, I think, last year that kind of surprised everybody if you look at it. Uh, you look back to last year in 2019, started out winning a lot of games. They, I mean, <laughs> you, you start the season out with cupcakes. Yes, uh, South Dakota State comes to town. They play, uh, you know, in Minneapolis. Uh, then they go on the road at Fresno State. Uh, Georgia Southern comes to town at Purdue, Illinois, Nebraska at Rutgers, Maryland. Um, and, and so they were on a eight-game win streak. They were 8-0. Uh, <laughs> and, and so was Penn State. Penn State 8-0 and as well. Penn State comes to town, uh, and you take them down to the wire. Uh, I don't remember exactly how... The game ended, um, but I, I, the score was 31-26. It was like a late stop or a late score or something, but it came down to the wire. It was very close, and I think that was one of those games that kind of made a statement about Minnesota and what P.J. Fleck wants to do with this program and what he has done. You look at the coach, P.J. Fleck, and, um, you know, I haven't really been talking much about the coaches in these videos, but, you know, this is one guy you kind of want to look at. Uh, he started out uh, as the Minnesota head coach uh, in 2017. Uh, he was, um, let's see... Uh, he was the head coach at Western Michigan for like two or three years. Um, for actually more like four years. Uh, but then they let him go or if anything he gets an offer from Minnesota, blah, blah, blah. Uh, doesn't make a whole lot. You know, I won't really get into all that. But you look at him uh, so far. Overall... As a head coach, he's 53-37. and 37. He's 3-2 and two in bowl games. At Minnesota, in the past three years, 23-15. and 15, That's a pretty good record um, for P.J. Fleck. So, obviously, I think he has proven he's the guy for the job at Minnesota. I think uh, there are some things he can work on. He recruits really well. Uh, you look at last year. Uh, the most points the defense gave up was, let me see, looks like 35, um, or 38 actually. The most they gave up was 38, uh, and that was in a loss the last week of November for rivalry weekend against Wisconsin. Uh, had a 10 and 2 record overall in the regular season, 11 and 2 overall uh, with the Outback Bowl win over Auburn. I mentioned that game in the Auburn preview. So, was this season a fluke for Minnesota? Was it a fluke? I don't think it was a fluke. Uh, the real question is for PJ Fleck. Can he get this team to get better? Can he recruit better? Can he, you know, work with the guys that he already has and win more games? You compare the season uh, upcoming in 2020 to the season last year. Uh, I, I think, I don't want to say it's harder or 
you know, tougher. I mean, it, it it's just about the same, right? Uh, you know, uh, getting into last year at Fresno State, Georgia Southern at home, South Dakota State at home, uh, at Purdue, at Rutgers. I mean, they beat some pretty cupcake-like team. I mean, high school teams, right? Maryland, you look at Mike Loxley, 52-10 win at home. I don't want to say they're a cupcake team, uh, but they're not one of the highest in the Big Ten. So, uh, But a great year for P.J. Fleck at Minnesota in 2019. Can he use some of the magic that he had last year to make a better run and maybe win the Big Ten? Uh, that's a big question. So, you get into the 2020 schedule. Uh, start out with some cupcakes. Uh, Florida Atlantic, uh, Texas Tech, Iowa. Uh, not a cupcake. Uh, I already did an Iowa preview video. Um, uh, BYU at Maryland, at Wisconsin, Michigan at Illinois, at Michigan State. Purdue, then a bye week, November 14th, home against Northwestern, and at Nebraska. This is kind of tough to figure out in the sense, I don't know what they're going to look like in 2020. I don't want to sit here and say they're going to be better than they were last year, and then see in 2020 where they just fall off the map or whatever. I don't want to, I don't want to look stupid for doing that because I know people will call me out I really don't know Big Ten Big Ten's a good conference Mich in uh, um, Minnesota has uh, I, I guess kind of proven themselves to be a dominant team that can compete if anything they're not Ohio State's level yet uh, and um, yes they beat Penn State last year but I still think that as far as the overall program, they're not quite there at Penn State yet. Uh, despite the great win that they had um, in October last year. So, Cupcake, Cupcake, Iowa, Cupcake, and BYU at Maryland, at Wisconsin. I don't know what Wisconsin is going to look like. I, I could see them winning their first two games. They could probably beat Iowa at home as well. Um... I think I did pick I would have lose that game. So, uh, but someone remind me if you did see the Iowa preview video. Um, but as of right now, and, and predictions, you know, they change. Uh, I do like Iowa to lose this game. I, it's in Minneapolis uh, at TCF Bank Stadium. And that's kind of a tough place to play. Uh and I think uh, we kind of saw that again in that Penn State game last year. So I, I would expect them to win that game. Then they get BYU. That's your homecoming game. Uh, uh, September 26th should be no problem. At Maryland, at Wisconsin. I think they're a better team than Maryland. Uh, far better team. Mike Loxley, I don't really know. I don't even remember what, they, what he did last year in his first year as a head coach. Um, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, but I, I think Minnesota is a better program and a better team. And I think that PJ Fleck has more experience. Um, you know, so I, I would expect them to win on the road there at Wisconsin. Now it starts to get a little tricky. I don't know. I, Wisconsin is really good at, at home. Uh, that's going to be tough. You know, you're coming off a road game, going on the road again. Back-to-back -back road games there. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I could see Wisconsin pulling it out. Um, whoa. But I, I really don't know what to make of it. Um, you know, Paul Chris has done 
a pretty good job there. I mean, could be better. Uh, Wisconsin's a football program that shows up and is only there for like a few seconds, if you know what I mean. Like, they're there for like a week, and then all of a sudden they just, I, I don't know. Uh, but they do recruit well. They have good players. They lose some guys to the draft, and Jonathan Taylor has a really great running back. Um, if you recall, he was in the Heisman contention a couple years ago, I think, Maybe back-to-back -back years he was in contention. He never won it, but um, finished like third or something. I don't know, but uh, but they lose quite a bit. Minnesota doesn't lose too much. I, they could probably pull it out. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I don't want to doubt Minnesota here. I'm going to give it to them. I'll be real. I'll give it to them. They can win on the road there. So you start out 6-0. Uh, and oh, You're already in bowl contention. But hold on, Michigan comes to town in Minnesota. Uh, Jim Harbaugh can't even beat Ohio State, man. You can't even beat your rival. No offense to Ohio State. They're a great program. I get, you know, they're way up there at the top of the Big Ten and everything. No disrespect to them, but my goodness. Michigan just struggles against certain teams. They'll be going on the road. Uh, I don't know. I think you can win. Let's look ahead. Northwestern on November 21st, you can win that. At Nebraska, should be no problem there. Uh, at Illinois, maybe they can trip you up. I really don't know what to make of this. Purdue comes to town. If, if Purdue was on the road, I'd pick Purdue. Because they know how to upset some teams at their own stadium. But they come to town, you should win there. This is tough. Minnesota, in my opinion, has it pretty easy this year. You know, I think Michigan could be a trap game for Minnesota. I'm going to give Michigan that road win right there. So you'll have your first loss. Uh, so when you look at this, and Northwestern's terrible. You get them at home, should be no problem. I think that you could see them ending up in the Big Ten Championship. So with that, I guess I'll go ahead and give a record predi prediction here. Um, again, you look back at last year, 10-2 and two regular season, 11-2 and two overall, count the Outback Bowl win over Auburn. Um, end the season on a high note. That's a great win for a program like Minnesota who's up and coming with P.J. Fleck over Auburn. Uh, you don't play Penn State or Ohio State. If those two teams, one of them was on your schedule, that's a loss right there. This tells you that you're in the Big Ten West. I think they could make, they could clinch their division and make it to the Big Ten Championship. As for the regular season, uh... I don't know. I I really don't know. I'm going to stick to... Maybe the, the game on Halloween, Michigan State. That could be a tough one. That could be a trap game. I think Michigan State could win at home there. I'm going to count it 11-1 for the Minnesota Gophers in 2020. The only loss, October 31st on Halloween at Michigan State. I think it's going to be a good year. It could be way worse than what I just predicted. It could be 12-0. I don't know. I'm just going with my gut and saying that Minnesota has a great year again. I think, you know, I, I just have a gut feeling. They don't lose a whole lot. They lose a wide receiver. They lose uh, safety or whatever to the draft. There's not a whole lot of prospects 
And I think P.J. Fleck could build off of what he had last year with the team and his success last year, again, coming off that great ball win over Auburn. Uh, which is a huge win, by the way, in the Outback Bowl. Uh, I think people wanted, uh, I don't want to say they wanted Auburn to win, uh, but they probably expected Auburn to win. And if that's the case, Minnesota won a game they probably should have lost. And you end the season on a high note. It gives you some motivation going into 2020, again, assuming we get a football season. So I, I'm not going to count it 12-0, but I'm going to play it safe with like 11-1. and Um so anyway, I don't know. <laughs> but Minnesota fans, if you're watching this, definitely comment down below and let me know. Any other Big Ten gurus or football gurus, let me know what you think about Minnesota. And um, yeah, tell me why I'm wrong. It Help me with this confusion because I don't know what to do here. But uh, I expect them to have some good success. I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to you know, crap the bed every single week or anything, but P.J. Fleck has done a pretty decent job since he's been there. Uh, pretty good record, and, uh, I mean, they kind of, <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say they have it easy, but we will see, but anyway. So, count it 11-1 and 1 in 2020. That's it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this preview video. More preview videos to come over the summer and, of course, in the spring. Almost done with the month of April, almost to May. Uh, and uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, the NFL Draft. I won't necessarily be able to watch it live, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully I'll still... Uh, I think you can listen to it on ESPN Radio, so I might do that. Anyway... Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, Ballard Sports Media. Checking out. Y'all have a good one.